The world is turning digital. The TV world, that is. And if you're not ready on February 17th, then you may end up with a screen full of snow. At least, that is what all the news reports are saying. And with all this sense of urgency and all the technical confusion comes an opportunity for others to sell us things we don't need at exaggerated prices. I'm going to be talking about the digital TV turnover. Who will be affected by it and what they should do about it? Let's start by discussing analog versus digital. For 60 years, broadcasters have sent their signals over the airwaves via analog signals. These are electrical impulses that carried the picture and sound to your antenna, which then sent it to your VCR or TV. These signals used a lot of space, or bandwidth, and could only travel so far. Obstacles could get in their way, such as buildings, trees, or mountains, thus further reducing their reach. Digital TV signals are the computer language of ones and zeros, but are still sent over the airwaves. They take less bandwidth, however, leaving more room for emergency radios that police and firefighters can use, among other things. Unfortunately, because digital signals still travel through the air via electrical impulses, they have a short distance of travel as well, and your antenna may have a harder time picking up those digital signals. They are also hindered by the same obstructions that hinder the analog signals. Any antenna capable of picking up UHF and signals should be capable of picking up the digital signals but you may find that you need to replace those rabbit ears on the TV to a rooftop unit and point it very specifically for each station. Digital signals do look sharper than analog signals, but the very nature of digital means they are an all or nothing proposition. With the old analog signals, the weaker the signal, the worse the picture, but a picture nonetheless. With digital signals, once the signal becomes too weak, the picture disappears. It becomes blocky or it loses the audio or, or locks up altogether. So you may find that once you have everything all hooked up correctly, you can't view some of the stations anymore, especially if you are on the fringes of the analog signal to begin with. Keep in mind that digital does not mean high definition. High definition pictures such as 720p and 1080p are digital, but digital signals can also transmit standard definition or 480i pictures as well. DVDs, for instance, are not high def, but they are digital. In order to be able to use the extra bandwidth saved by using digital signals, the government passed a law stating that on February 17, 2009, all full power broadcasting stations must switch to using digital signals only. So who will this affect? Well, if you are using an antenna to pick up stations over the air and you have a TV that does not have a digital tuner, you will not be able to watch those stations come February 17th. Look for labels on your TV such as DTV, Digital TV, or HDTV to let you know if you have a digital tuner. They might also refer to a DTV decoder or receiver. Labels such as Digital Ready or HD Ready do not denote a digital tuner and have analog tuners only. If you watch only cable or satellite TV, then you need not worry as those broadcasters are not affected by the new law. Although they may choose to discontinue their analog offerings, in which case they can supply you with a set-top box to use with their system, probably at a higher price. Okay, so you've decided you need to prepare for the DTV turnover. What do you need to do? You could go and purchase a nice shiny TV with a digital tuner and that would take care of your TV woes. If you use a VCR and antenna to record shows, you can replace that with a DVR or a digital video recorder, which records shows on a hard drive instead of a VHS tape and has a digital tuner as well. You can also check with your cable provider and see what they offer for local channels and bypass the antenna outright. 
Now if none of these options are to your liking, then you can get what is known as a digital to analog converter box. This is a unit that takes the incoming digital signal from the antenna and converts it back to analog for our older equipment. That sounds great, doesn't it? If only it were as simple as it sounds. Let's take a closer look and see if this option is really for you. Taking those who use a VCR to record, we need to consider both the VCR and the TV need this converter box and they can't share. Only one box per unit please. That means we need to get two boxes for this setup. Never mind if you have more than one TV that needs another converter box. Also consider that you will have to set the converter box as well as the VCR to the correct channel for recording. Now throw in another remote control for each converter box and things start to get complicated. Now let's talk about the converter boxes themselves. Not all converters are created equal and you can find that some units give a better picture and sound than others. The boxes start around $40 and go up from there with the more expensive boxes usually providing better quality. The government does have a $40 coupon program that is supposed to help this transition go smoothly. Each household is eligible for two coupons for purchasing two boxes, one coupon per box. These coupons can only be used for approved converter boxes and from approved providers and must be used within 90 days. But with over 2 million people on a waiting list, many folks will not have their coupons in time and complaints are coming in of stores out of stock or not honoring the coupons at all. If you've waited this long to order your coupons, it's likely that you'll have to wait several months before receiving and using them. For converter box coupons, you can go to dtv2009.gov and follow the instructions there. For a list of approved converter boxes, you can go to ntiadtv.gov backslash cecb underscore list Dot CFM. These websites will be listed again at the end of the video, so be sure to stay tuned with the pen and paper ready. Because low power transmitters servicing some rural areas are not required by this new law to switch to all digital signals, you probably want to make sure you get a converter box with a pass-through capability. This means that it will accept the analog and digital signals it receives and pass both signals through to your equipment. The new digital TVs and DVRs have both analog and digital tuners built in to be backwards compatible. For many, a simple and inexpensive digital to analog converter box hooked up to their existing antenna and plugged into their TV or VCR is all that will be necessary. Others may require an antenna upgrade as well. Buying this extra equipment and setting it up may be enough of a reason to switch to cable or satellite service or to purchase a new TV and DVR with digital tuners built in. Any way you look at it, if you use an antenna to view over the air broadcasts with an older TV containing no digital tuner, you'll be spending money to continue viewing these stations. Hopefully, the government coupon will help save even if it does take a while to receive them.